those of you who've been on the channel before, welcome back. For those of you who have not seen the channel before, welcome to the Who Hikers channel. So, what are we up to today? Well, today, again, we're on the uh, Augustine's Camino, uh, Faversham through to Canterbury. So, we've just come out of Faversham Station. Um, for those who want to follow the trail, come out of Faversham Station. Sort of double back on yourself, come under the railway, go along Preston Lane and uh, down to Catherine's Church, where we are now. So it's about 11 miles today. Uh, looks like a pretty good route. Uh, with us, um, a bit overcast, we're expecting some rain later on, but we'll see how that goes. Been a bit of a wet and rainy week, so uh, yeah, hoping there's no farmer's fields. Just behind me, you can see uh, St. Catherine's Church. Uh, St. Catherine's Church is about 1500s, 1600s. Uh, started out as a very small shed-like thing, and then uh, over the years has, uh, has grown into this beautiful church. But like all the churches we see on this route, it's shut. Um, but nevertheless, it's still a, a beautiful church. Um, we're just going to have a quick walk around it in a minute and uh, just have a, have a look at it. But yeah, yeah, not a bad day, not a bad start to the day. Um, just going to have a quick brew and then, uh, then push off on a journey. There you go, it's St. Catherine's. And so, yeah, again, uh, it's closed. Uh, some cracking grounds. We've just come from uh, from down that way. So a short hop from the station up to here. So this morning we have Miss Snooks. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Excellent. Looking forward to the stroll today? Absolutely. Into Canterbury today, so I'm quite excited to reach there. Look at the around the cathedral. So, yep, yeah, bring on. Weather's dry at the minute. Hopefully it'll stay that way. And yeah, I'm excited to get cracking. So, time for a quick brew, and, uh, and then we're going to push off and uh, see what the day holds for us. And hopefully, we've got some decent signage. So, we're an hour or so into the walk. Um, we come out of the station, you uh, you make your way up to St. Catherine's Church, we said. St. Catherine's Church is a footpath in front of you. You follow the footpath all the way through, just keep going straight uh, to eventually come up to uh, a main road where you turn left and you see Faversham Football Station. Turn right, go past the football station, and immediately when you get past the uh, football ground, uh, there's a pathway to the left. And then you just literally follow that all the way through uh, and keep going through the fields. And eventually you'll come up to like a natural border between fields with a load of popular trees, and a path turns sharply right. Um, if you miss that, don't worry because there is another out. But if you turn right there, follow that down, go down to the motorway bridge, turn left, and then again, just keep going and going. Uh, until you come to a footbridge. If you miss that turning and you go straight, you'll come to a roadway, uh, turn right, and then there's another bridge that takes you over the road directly after that bridge, turn left again. It takes you down to a little village called Corkin and takes you down to a, a level crossing. Now, it really was a holly right on the edge of the level crossing. There's a big white house there, and the footpath sign actually points in their garden and tells you to go that way. So after five minutes of deliberating whether that's the way to go, um, we decided it was and then you do literally walk between the house and the fence uh, by the railway line uh, up into a big field and then you follow this big field uh, and that's where we are cracky walk so far um it's not not hard not that extreme a few fields and stuff but uh yeah nice so far and uh it looks like the blue skies are coming out as well so yeah happy days so this is the last point it's been pretty much uh straight for paths uh, for a couple of ploughed fields um, for a few vineyards uh, and then a couple of uh, paddocks with some livestock in and it's literally just a straight path and it's been pretty well marked to be fair um, all over across all the stiles and, uh, and gates eventually we come down we're, we're actually heading now through this field uh, over towards that church over there uh, we'll give you a look at the church when we get there but uh, yeah this has kind of been the terrain so far so it's not been too bad, but uh, it's certainly getting a bit warm now, that's for sure. So, you see the church of St. Peter, St. Paul. Another one, St. Peter, St. Paul. I'm sure it's about the third one we've had of this. Beautiful looking building. Um, again, I know I keep harping on about them, but uh, again, it's shut. Again, this is another one where you can get your passport stamped had it been open, but it's not. Um, I said in the last video, it's such a shame because some of these uh, old churches are absolutely beautiful and it'd be nice to have a look inside them. Uh, 
We're just walking around, just looking at some of the dates on some of the uh, headstones, you know, back into 17 and 1800s. Amazing. This is another church where the grounds are, are made for the wildlife. Uh, so we're in the borough of uh, Bleen at the moment. And the borough of Bleen was mentioned in the Canterbury Towers. So there you go. I really must find out why all the churches around here are St Peter, St Paul. You know, I haven't got a Scooby. Yeah. I'm just looking at an info board here to see if there's anything of any significance. But um, not really. Oh, onwards. So once we come past that church, we found the footpath. Um, a bit misleading, but uh, you go up, you find a golf course. And in typical wordy fashion, when it's a golf course, um, there was no signage. And we wandered around that golf course. I think we uh, we certainly pissed a few people off around there by wandering around. But hey-ho. Uh, eventually, we found our way out of the golf course on the wrong track, so um, we had to uh, pathfind to make our own track, but we're back on track now, and just come through, and it's just a, it's just a sea of uh, soft fruit fields by the look of it. Um, there's an house in the distance there. Um, absolutely beautiful, really, really nice. So yeah, so back on track, um, and he's just gonna follow this field, see where we come out. So. Probably about halfway through the trek now. over in the distance. So we've got a fair old trek now through these woods. It's a uh, Bleen ancient woodland. So yeah, uh, we've got about a mile, mile and a half to go through here. So it should be nice. It's bloody muddy. Bends, and then you'll come up on a, another footpath eventually on the left. Jump into that, you go up and down that, follow that all the way through, and it eventually brings you out to the main road at Charter Match. Where you turn left and go through the village. And then you uh, carry on walking through the village until you cross the North Downs Way. And I can't tell where you go after that because I ain't there yet. But uh, yeah, that last bit, um, that, was, that was quite a challenge. Uh, it was quite up and down through there, and then uh, when you mentioned North Downs Way, you know you're going to have a couple of hills coming on. 
we've got about three miles to go and then we're into uh canterbury so uh happy days it's starting to uh to blow in a bit now so um gonna get cracking before we get uh rained on but yeah, it's, it's a decent track um so it's still uh, still hunting signs but that's the story of this you must be sick of hearing me say that by now but yeah it's pleasant so just go with a chart match now and uh we'll catch back up a bit later on so when you do come out of a chance and come to a crossroads go straight to the crossroads and you'll see a sign for the north downs way just pick them signs up and it uh, sends you down into another set of woods um equally as muddy and you just keep uh, keep following so not too far to go now that's coming through um Bleen ancient woodland um at Bleen ancient woodland there's a camp um yeah again there is a board here that i'm reading off of i'm, I'm not clever um called big berry camp and it's a major prehistoric earthwork in canterbury area up until recently it had been masked by the woodlands of south Bleen, a part of one of the largest ancient woodlands in kent uh we're just on a hill at the moment and the hill uh, there was a fort there that was recognised in 1874 uh, and uh, there was Iron Age tools discovered here as well. Uh, the fort that was up on the hill was believed to have been the site of Julius Caesar's first battle as well in 54 BC as he led his forces to invade uh, Britain. So yeah, bling. Um, I will try and find some more details about it but uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So sometimes you can't beat a bit of Harry boat out on the trail. Nice little snack just to keep you going. So still on the North Downs. Um, and we'll probably head on the North Downs now all the way into uh, Canterbury, I would have thought. Uh, the good thing about the North Downs is it's very, very well marked out. So, uh, and it's uh, very well denoted on the uh, OS maps as well. So you can find your way. Yeah, it's getting to the uh, early, early evening sun now. Yeah, the long shadows and the birds all singing. Nice. So probably about another mile and a half now back to um, the station to get us right back to the car. Um, and then the next excursion will be from Canterbury down to Stodmarsh, where we'll pick up the cathedral on, on that trip. So we won't get to Can Canterbury Cathedral today, we'll just get to the outskirts of Canterbury. Um, and then on the next one, we'll get the train back into Canterbury and then uh, get a cathedral there. But yeah, beautiful. So we uh, we got into Canterbury, just into the main roundabout. Um, so we followed the uh, North Downs way. If you look just over there, there is the top of the cathedral. So. I did say we might not see the cathedral, but there you go. There you go, there was, there was the top of the cathedral. Um, not going to go down to it today anyway, and we never really was planning to go down to it today. Uh, it was just about getting into Canterbury. So uh, the next time round, when we come down here, we've got Canterbury and Stob Marsh, and then um, we can uh, hopefully have a bit more of a longer look around uh, the cathedral, because the cathedral is absolutely stunning. Uh, and also, hopefully, hopefully we'll get you have a look around that. So, top result has got into uh, Canterbury, came past the Dunstans, <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotta stay. That's, uh, that's made my day, um, yeah, brilliant. Well, there you go, another day done, uh, back at uh, Sittingbourne Station, picked the car up. Um, I was going to do this from outside the car, but there's some uh, person uh, with his elbows hot rod racing around the uh, multi-story there, so I can't really hear a thing, but hey ho. Anyway, listen, um, you could probably hear that anyway. So listen, another great day. Um, tough old walk in places. Done. So that was Faversham back to, uh, to, to Canterbury. Uh, word of order, when you get into Canterbury, if you're getting a train back on a Kent line, don't go for Canterbury West, go to Canterbury East. Yeah, and there's about a mile and a half between the two of them. So uh, yeah, that was a bit of a tricky one, but hey ho. Um, got back finally. Uh, like I say, not a bad trip. Um, 
I'll do it again. Yeah, uh, it was nice. The weather was nice. It was good. Uh, plenty to see. Looking forward to the next one. Go have a bit of a uh, mooch around uh, Canterbury next time. Go and take in the cathedral and some of the other stuff. Uh, so looking forward to that. And then uh, it's Canterbury to Stob Marsh, which is only about uh, eight, nine, ten miles, somewhere around there. Uh, we racked up about 13 mile in the end. I think uh, a little bit of that was going from one station to the other. But yeah, all in all, uh, I would recommend this one. Um, take some plenty of food and stuff with you. There's, it's limited uh, on the route, so uh, take your snacks and stuff. But anyhow, uh, it's always good to have your company. As always, get outdoors. Yeah, go and have a walk around. Go and take in some of the beautiful countryside around where you live. Um, have a look at some of the back videos. They'll give you some ideas around Kent and the coastlines and stuff like that. Um, yeah, all good. I think the next video will probably be a bit more of a, a workshop jobby. Uh, we're going to do some stuff around uh, food, what to pack, what not to pack. Well, we're going to get the old uh, 24 hour ration pack and strip that down and see what it's got in it and uh, see if we can do something a little bit better. So uh, there's one for you. Let's say to look forward to. And again, uh, the next Camino one will be Canterbury. And we'll try and get around the Canterbury Cathedral and all that. So listen, as always, guys, get outdoors, stay safe. Um, know where you're going. Well, kind of, in the general direction. <laughs> look after yourselves. Great to have your company. If you haven't already, have a look at some of the back videos. That'd be great. Um, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, you take care. We'll see you soon. So you all mind how you go. See you soon.